Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, welcome to Spring Lake, where I guess not the best of news. Uh, it was reported uh, a little bit earlier this year that uh, carp had been caught out of this lake. And it seems to be an occurrence happening more and more in the Edmonton area, especially around Stock Ponds. A real pleasure to welcome Stephen Spencer. He's a senior biologist with Alberta Environment and Protected Areas. And Stephen, uh, first, thanks so much for taking some time and coming out here and talking to us today. Absolutely, yeah. Let's, um, let's just chat a little bit about what, for those who are not familiar, what's the, the damage that a, a, na a non-native species or an invasive species like carp can do to a lake like this? Carp are very aggressive um, invaders. And so they, they not only um, um, eat other fish, but they um, change the whole ecosystem. They're generalists, so they can eat everything from plankton to other fish. And they, um, and their diggings will, will actually affect the water quality in a lake. So they, they can have a profound, profound effect on, on, on these fisheries, unfortunately. So when you get reports of carp in a lake, such as uh, Spring Lake or others, um, what is sort of the government's response to it? Well, this is just heartbreaking, Michael. The, um, this has been a popular destination for over 70 years. And so, um, you know, it's, it's provincially important. Uh, local fly fishermen really enjoy this fishery. So this is uh, really bad news. And, and unfortunately, it'll be very difficult to do anything to help the situation. The carp, once they're established, are very, very difficult to get rid of. It's very expensive, and it's, it's probably not a great idea to, to do it just based on the expense. It's a bad situation. So I, I guess really the only option uh, left for us is, is for anglers when they catch these fish is to keep them out of the water, in essence, in essence kill them. Yes, we, we um, certainly have that messaging. If you catch one, please kill it and remove it from the water body and dispose of it properly. We, uh, we want to keep the numbers low for as long as possible. In terms of how they're getting into these water bodies, obviously there's no connective stream or river into this lake. So I guess it's one of two ways, perhaps naturally by birds dropping fish or dropping eggs into the water, or, and we hate to see this happen, but people are actually putting them into these water bodies. Yeah, and so that's a, a very strong message that I, I, we, we try to get out is, uh, you know, please don't move around species in, in Alberta. And uh, our officers have intercepted people transferring fish illegally and uh, carp in particular. And so it, we know it occurs. It's very, very difficult to intercept someone that's doing it. So um, yeah, it's, it's a real problem. And uh, we're hoping that people um, hear this messaging and are more careful with uh, fish and other organisms in the environment. Not to ask you to get into inside somebody's head that may be doing this, but is, is it, you know, they want to catch carp or they, they you know, any, any reasoning behind why this is happening, Stephen? I, yeah, I, as a fish biologist, I, I don't really know what people are thinking. We, we have heard people say after being caught that, uh, um, their, their fish tank wasn't large enough to, to, for their, their fish anymore and they wanted a nice place for the fish to live and it was um, not a good reason to uh, move fish out but uh, some of the rationale behind some of the thinking but uh, yeah it's uh, it, it, we, there is some evidence that birds can move fish but there's a lot of evidence that it, it's humans that are doing it and really accelerating the process. Are you a little concerned about, I mean, Hassey Lake, a, a lake that you folks and partners like the Alberta Conservation Association, Alberta Fishing Game have put an off on the Trout Club, have put a lot of effort into bringing back from the brink kind of, uh, so to speak, uh, that it could be uh, negatively impacted as well. Absolutely, I, I think that's a big worry is, is now that we have uh, another source of Prussian carp that they'll get moved around and so uh, yeah it's, uh, it's very concerning in, in playing this forward 5, 10, 20 years, what's it going to do to our, 
stock trout fisheries and our native fish fisheries. It's a pretty tough environment right now too. I mean, uh, water levels are, are low, nitrogen levels are high. We're seeing blooms in some of the lakes in the uh, across the province. Um, kind of what goes through your mind when you look at, at our fisheries, both stocked and, and, and native? That's an excellent point and, and one of the um, strengths that the Prussian carp has over our native species is they're very resilient to, to poor water quality. They can live for a period of time in practically no oxygen and uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very, uh, it's not good. Stephen, if somebody does come across a carp uh, while they're out angling and, and maybe it's in a water body that's never been reported before, or even if it has been, um, should they be calling the, um, the invasive species aquatic line, letting folks know? Yes, please. Yes, please report uh, any uh, strange fish that you catch and uh, um, we'll uh, look, investigate it further. All right. We'll leave it there. Um, let's hope. I don't know. I don't know what to hope for. This is, it's pretty sad. Stephen, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. All right. That's it for us for today, folks. Uh, till next time, I'm Michael Short. Keep an eye out for those carp. Let's go outdoors.